The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we have the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time, the World Mission Sunday. But instead of wearing green vestments, as usually we do during ordinary season, we use white vestment because today, this weekend, yesterday and today, we celebrate the parish feast day. Saint Hedwig is our patron saint and her feast is on October 16. So today we celebrate Saint Hedwig feast day. And so many graces are given to people who pray through the intercession of Saint Hedwig. On my vestment, there is the image of St. Hedwig. Also on the altar, we have the relic of our saint. And I will bless in the end of Mass, bless you with, say the short prayer, and bless you with relic of St. Hedwig. So on the, my left side, there is the statue of St. Hedwig. There is always the relic above her, so in the end of Mass, we invite you to come and say a prayer to, to God through the intercession of our saint. And today, as you probably noticed, there is more people because we have the new tradition in our parish. We have the family Mass. So the family with children, usually from CCD classes, come to this uh, Mass and pray. So I would like to welcome all of you on this special, special day today. The Mass is offered for repose of the soul of Michael and Mary Michalski. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare well to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to mighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore, as blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Right hand of 
let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, and the reverent intercession of Saint Hedwig may bring us heavenly aid, just as her wonderful life is an example of humanity for all. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him, and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him, and leaving the gates unbarred, for the sake of Jacob, my servant, of Israel, my chosen one. I have called you by your name, giving you a title, though you knew me not, I am the Lord, there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not. So that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord. There is no other. The word of the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in His ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favor. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home. Your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of Thessalonians. And God the Father and Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you. Remember you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to our mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance and hope of our Lord Jesus Christ for our God and Father, knowing, brothers and sisters, loved by God, how you were chosen, for our gospel did not come to you in a word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit with much conviction. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. 
if you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples. And you will know the truth, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we hear that Jesus called those people who tried to entrap him hypocrites. Usually those people who pretend to care about others, but they have different intention. They say something else, they do something else, and Jesus knew their hearts, and he called them hypocrites. The word hypocrisy comes from the Greek word hypocrites, which means acting on a stage. When we are hypocritical, we are putting on act, say one thing, and then doing the opposite. But when our actions betray our words, we have to ask ourselves if we really believe what we say we do. And my brothers and sisters, we all are guilty of hypocrisy. It is one of those unfortunate consequences of our human, human nature, fallen human nature. And, uh, for example, we might lecture the children about not spending too much time on their screens and then spend hours watching TV. Or we may claim that we are a team player at work, but then create division by criticizing fellow co-worker. It can be a painful process to search our consciousness discover ways in which our actions are, are in lining up with our beliefs. But the Lord understands our struggles and will forgive us and help us to change. Best of all, the more we are able to authentically live out our Christian belief, the more we can become living witnesses to Jesus in the kingdom he has ushered in. And I think the way we can act different, the way we can 
know how to live as disciples, true disciples of Jesus, is through the example, through the life of our saints. And today, this great example gives us our patron saint, Saint Hedwig. Who was she? Saint Hedwig of Silesia, Święta Jadwiga Śląska, was a princess, wife, a mother, and a builder of bridges between German and Polish people. And her husband's name was Henry the Bearded. Saint Hedwig, whose feast is on October 16, lived in the 13th century and received a good education in her youth at the convent in Bavaria. She is recorded to have said that knowledge plus holy, holiness of life leads to greater glory of souls in heaven. Henwick became known as a helper of poor people. She came from holy family. Hedwig's sister, Gertrude, was a mother of St. Elizabeth of Hungary. While still a girl, Hedwig moved to the lower part of Poland, the region called Silesia, to marry Duke Henry I. Together they had seven children, but only two of them lived to maturity. St. Hedwig loved the Eucharist, prayer, and reading and meditation on scripture. In her own household, she had scripture read along during the meal times. Despite her wealth, she practiced serious asceticism. She fasted, ate plain food, and lived with few personal possessions. After her children were grown, Hedwig devoted herself to the spiritual and corporal works of mercy, especially helping the poor, sick, hungry, widows, orphans, and expectant mothers. Unlike other princesses of her time, Hedwig helped people with her own hand and not through her servants. She also gave shelter to the sick and disabled people in her castle. A biographer of Henwig wrote that the poor followed her everywhere she went as if she was their mother. St. Hedwig built a monastery and several churches. One of these churches in modern-day Trebnica, where she is buried, is now a shrine to the saint who was canonized in 1267. The shrine is a popular place of pilgrimage of people from all over the world. St. Hedwig also had a strong love of the Blessed Virgin Mary and would carry a statue of Our Lady around with her, using to bless the sick. Images and statues of St. Hedwig usually depict her holding a statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary, feeding the poor, or holding a church. So I think on this day of the World Mission Sunday, she is a very good example to us how to help poor people, and those who are in need, especially in those distant places. So the missionary work should be also our concern today and always. And to be a true follower of Christ means to follow the example of saints, especially our patron saint, Saint Hedwig.
Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified, and in Pontius Pilate he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who of the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We offer our prayers to the one in whose image we are made and whose law is inscribed in our hearts. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For members of the church throughout the world, may the outpouring of the Holy Spirit sanctify each one of us in our daily lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations and all those in authority, may God grant them fortitude in governing wisely with justice and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are afraid, may God give them peace in the knowledge of his love for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those gathered here, may the love of Christ enfold us and strengthen our confidence and belief in his forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve in the military, at home or overseas, May they be protected from harm as they endeavor to protect us and our freedoms. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parishioners or friends who faithfully support our church, may they be abundantly blessed and protected. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Michael and Mary Mahalski and family for whom this Mass is being offered, we remember the founders, builders, benefactors of our parish, and all the souls in purgatory. May God in his mercy and love grant them eternal rest and happiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please add your private petitions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all goodness, through the intercession of St. Hedwig, hear and answer the prayers of those you claim as your own. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
by the Father, you were chosen for the Son, you were chosen from all women, and for women, shining one, gentle woman. Quiet light, morning star, so strong and bright, gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom, teach us love. Pray, my brother and sister, my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth we brought to renewal humanity fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled our own sins, and by rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, o Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and the resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to recognize, reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain the inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Hedwig, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. God's presence, 
singing for joy. All the earth proclaim the Lord, sing your praise to God. Know that the Lord is our Creator, yes, God is our Father, we are His soul. All the earth proclaim the Lord, sing your praise. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated. I'd like to invite Michel to tell us more about this new tradition in our church, the Family Mass. Good afternoon, everyone. Every third Sunday of the month, we're gonna to try to make it every third Sunday, unless it's a holiday, special holiday coming up, we're gonna have our family mass, where we're gonna invite our CCD children. As most of you know, we have to do a virtual platform now where we're using Zoom classes. So it is a way for us to give handouts to our students, uh, kind of get to see them in person, um, and it's a good way for the children to also be able to see some of their fellow students. So we welcome everyone here today. Um, I'm going to ask that after Mass, anybody with CCD children to please line up socially distance. We'll give out your books and whatever handouts we have. So please, on the side aisle, if you would come and line up, I will give out uh, your materials. And I just want to say thank you to everybody for coming today. It's very nice to see all of you, and we welcome you here again at St. Hedwig's for this uh, religious education year. Thank you, everyone. Please stand for the special blessing. Prayer to St. Hedwig, all-powerful God, may the prayers of St. Hedwig bring us your help and make her life of remarkable humility be an example to us all. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. St. Hedwig, pray for us. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. as 
her patron Because you know and help our needs You understand our daily struggle Through you we pray to God for peace Your good example helps us lead Through all the storms winds in our midst Oh blessed, oh blessed Saint Catholic Your good example helps us lead through all the storms within our midst. Oh, blessed, oh,